the fellow Ode. This was probably the most anticipated grinder of 2020. And it's 2021 now, and I've had it for a year. So let's take a look at this grinder after almost a year of daily use. I received the grinder on September 20th of 2020. So as of publishing this video, it's been almost exactly one year of using this grinder almost every single day. I thought it'd be fun to take a look and extended type review at this grinder after having it for a year, share my thoughts and experiences from this past year. So as we get started, let's take a look at some of the original marketing from Fellow and I'll comment along the way about how I think they've lived up to their claims or how they haven't. And then at the end of the video, I'll let you know my overall thoughts about whether or not you should consider purchasing this right now, along with several areas I think Fellow could improve if they go to a version two of this grinder. The first claim is right in their tagline for the grinder itself, a cafe performance for your countertop. Now, there's a lot of subjective assumptions you might have when you read that something is cafe performance. When I read this, I first and foremost think of quality and durability. The coffee shop is a a dangerous place for cheap materials, poorly built devices, and shoddy workmanship. When you couple that with a countertop, I think of something small and aesthetically pleasing. So let's take a look at some of these items. Honestly, the Ode is pretty small and mighty. It weighs almost 10 pounds, and I remember the first time I picked this up, I was immediately surprised and slightly impressed by the weight of this thing. But having a hefty weight is no guarantee that something is quality and Put together well. So my use with the grinder probably isn't the normal use that most people have with it. Many will set it up on the countertop and really never move it. Well, I've had the genius idea to take this on trips, move it around my office, and use it for content creation, which involves moving it as well. I have dropped or knocked this grinder over from about three feet multiple times. Now, I don't want to give you the impression that this is because the grinder is not stable. That is far from the truth. This is because I just wasn't being careful. Like the time I tried lifting up my coffee bar and completely tipping it over because I wasn't paying attention or the time I put it on the ledge of my trunk and it fell off or the time where I was moving it to make a video and I tripped over a video light cord and dropped it. Now these times are not normal, but it shows that the grinder is pretty durable and it's not showing any wear or tear and it really works like the day I received it. So honestly, if that doesn't speak to the durability, I don't know what does. Now, this isn't to say that I haven't heard of people having issues with their odes, such as the birds getting jammed, which Fell has actually released a support video for on how to fix it. Now, while I don't think this problem is super common, it was common enough for them to produce a video to show you how to manually fix it. But overall, my experience speaks to how well the grinder is in terms of durability and the quality of materials. Another aspect of cafe performance has to speak to the quality of the grind. Now, I'll get into some more details about the grind a bit later, but I will go ahead and speak to the quality, but not the range. I find the quality of the grind to be extremely good in terms of uniformity. I've never had any problems with having too many fines or boulders and just simple eye tests really speak to the evenness of the grind. This also goes to speak to one of their biggest selling points is that the grinder has 64 millimeter flat burrs, which helps with quality, consistency, and speed. To have that large of a burr set at a home grinder at this price is pretty impressive. Even grinding at much coarser settings for the Chemex, it performs much better than my Baratza Encore and some other high-end hand grinders such as the Easy Presso K Plus, Commandante, or the Time War Chestnut. X. Along with the quality of the grind is the speed of the grinder. This grinder is extremely fast, taking about five seconds for 20 grams of beans and about seven seconds for 30 grams of beans. After you use this grinder for a while, you forget how fast this is to something compared to like the Baratza Encore. As far as it fitting on your countertop and not taking up a lot of space, I think that this really does the job. While I do keep my grinder on a coffee bar, so the height really isn't an issue for me, I will say that when I brought it into my kitchen, you could tell that it would fit right at home there. It is easy to load beans underneath cabinets and it doesn't take up a large footprint wherever it is sitting. All right, let's keep scrolling down the page a bit. And I've already mentioned the large burr set. And the next thing that they talk about is the smart speed PID motor. This allows the grinder to adjust the speed based on how many beans are going through the grinder. So when the last several beans are going through it, it actually slows down the motor to help with that uniformity of the grind size. Well, I can't exactly test this out. I do think this grinder continues to produce a nice, 
human grind, whatever range you're at. Additionally, it doesn't have that high pitched squeal that you might get with some grinders as the last beans fall through. Next up, they categorize the next three features as perfect for the home. I'm going to talk about the single dose loading more in a bit when I talk about the cleanliness of the machine. So I'll go ahead and skip that. Regarding the reduced grind noise, it has been nice that this really hasn't changed over the past year and it is still as quiet as ever. I really have no complaints here, but there is this beep when you turn it on and off. And I found this really annoying when I first got it. Like, why do you need a beep on your grinder when turning it on and off? After a year of use, I don't really notice it, but honestly, it's completely useless additional sound. It would be one thing if the grinder was so quiet that you needed to know when you turned it on and off, but that's just not the case. Let's look at auto stop. I kind of have a love-hate relationship with this feature. This is one of those features that you absolutely get used to and forget it, except when either it doesn't work or you use a different electric grinder. While grinding the beans is really fast, it takes about four to five seconds for the auto stop feature to kick in. So when talking about how quick it grinds, you also have to take this into account if you're just letting it automatically stop. Additionally, this doesn't always work. I don't have any data behind this besides my personal experience and thinking back on it, but I feel like this probably happens about 10% of the time. My guess though, is that my brain is fooling me and it's either a lot more or a lot less but I've never got to the point that I'm like, sheesh, this thing never turns off like it should. When I got my niche zero, this was the first major difference I noticed. I didn't realize how much of my routine just assumed that the grinder was going to turn off. When I use the other grinder, I actually find it annoying that I have to sit there and wait for the grinds to go through and manually turn it off. First world problems I know, but this just goes to show that I absolutely love this feature. The next set of features fellow categorizes under a clean machine. The first one under this is the magnetically aligned catch. I will say that after a year of use, this doesn't get old with the simple enjoyment of putting the grind catch back in its place. This is just one of those things I love about the grinder. It is the simple things that really make it a pleasure to use. The next feature is the electronically grounded shoot and grinds chamber. They state in their marketing material that quote, Ode's shoot and grinds chamber are electrically ground to help reduce static and decrease mess. I would absolutely hate to see the mess that this machine creates if it wasn't electrically grounded. One of my biggest complaints is how messy this machine is. Grinds and shafts stick to absolutely everything. It sticks to the edges of the grind chamber, shaft flies off and catches on the base and the ridge back of the grinder, and grinds get stuck on the grinds chamber lid and more. Now, this is easily fixed with doing the Ross drop technique, which is just adding a drop or a spray of water to your beans before grinding. This absolutely cleans up the mess and it is easy to do. I just wish they didn't proclaim cleanliness as a feature because the electrically grounded chute and grind chamber, because it just doesn't really work. Another thing about using the RDT method with this grinder is that many times a moist bean sticks to the single dosing hopper before going down to be ground. So in my normal workflow, I usually keep the hopper lid off, turn on the grinder, and then more often than not, I have to go back and help the last bean or beans go through to be ground. The other aspect of the RDT method is how you weigh out your beans. Now, I'm sure a lot of people take out the grinds chamber and use that to weigh out their beans. This is fine, except when using the RDT method, I don't really want to get the inside of my grinds chamber wet, so I end up using a different container. I guess what I'm saying is, is that I wish they came up with a nice separate weighing cup for your beans, especially since this is a single dosing design. And lastly, the grinds knocker. Let's just say this works about 50% worse than what it should. I absolutely love the idea, but especially if you don't use the RDT technique, there's still some retention in the grinder. Now, let me state that the small amount of retention in the grinder after using the knocker has never really affected the taste in the cup. But when I come back for my next grind and I see a small bit of grinds in my grinds chamber, I know that when I originally knocked it and tried getting all the grinds out, it didn't happen. And like I said, this is more pronounced if you don't use the RDT technique. So there's my rundown of its 10 features that they talked about in the original Kickstarter starter when it launched back in 2019. Now let's talk about some things that could be improved or changed if they were ever to do a version two of this grinder. First and foremost is the grind size. Now I'm definitely not saying anything unique here, but while the grind quality is superb, it just doesn't get fine enough. 
Now let's qualify this. You can brew all coffees and all different pour over methods with this grinder. But when I say it doesn't get fine enough, I mean, it doesn't provide the amount of flexibility for all different types of recipes and coffees to my taste. I'm sure there are many who don't have a problem with it not grinding fine enough, but there are some methods and coffees, especially for single cups, that I would really like to grind finer and get some more extraction out of my cup. For example, I love the Oria Brewer. It is a small single cup brewer that you can brew multiple different ways with. I have found success with a slightly coarser grind and about four pours and tasted some really good coffees. So the Ode works perfect for this, but I also like to grind quite a bit finer than the Ode can go and get a different cup with some higher extractions and some bolder flavors. When I want to go this route, I actually just use a hand grinder because the Ode doesn't get close to as fine as it should go. Like I said, this isn't anything new. Bello has addressed this in several updates and has even released a burr on the newer ones that they call their version 1.1 burr set that does go slightly finer. Additionally, they, they're selling the SSP branded burr set for $175 that will most definitely grind fine enough for all sorts of pour over recipes, but I don't wanna pay $175 on top of the grinder itself. And as of June 16th, 2021, they stated that they're currently working hard to hit a fall 2021 ship date for Ode version two burrs, which will be free to kick Kickstarter backers, and I'll imagine will come stock at some point with the new grinders. I'm excited for this, but I'm also just reporting on my experience up until this point. I'm sure that fellow will fulfill their promises and release new burrs that will be better in this regard. Honestly, I'm a bit baffled that this wasn't done in the first place. I don't know the story behind it, but the pushback from a broad set of users to the point that they're creating new burrs definitely seems like a miss to me. But hey, this was a Kickstarter project after all. Another thing that I would like to see improved is the grind catch bin. It has these fins that is supposed to help pour the grounds and not make a mess, but in reality, grounds just get stuck underneath and it's just not practical. I usually just pour from the other side and if it is a small device, I use the AeroPress funnel to keep everything clean. Speaking of the grind catch bin, the lid of that is pretty annoying to put on. You really have to align it just right. I'm not sure the best solution, but it definitely needs addressed. Okay, so let's summarize some of the features that I love about the grinder. Number one, the consistency and the taste that it produces. I really feel that this brings out the best of my coffees with a lot of clarity in the cup, and I've never been disappointed about how it performs within its limits. Number two, the aesthetics. I mean, come on, this thing is absolutely beautiful and I love having it on my brew bar. Number three, the speed of the grind along with the automatic shutoff. And like I said, when it all goes properly, it is just an absolutely killer combination. Number four, I didn't mention this earlier, but this is extremely easy to clean, so it helps me keep it maintained well. And number five, the simplicity of the grinder. This summarizes some of the other points that I previously stated, but from changing the grind setting to turning on the grinder to it automatically shutting off, simplicity is at its core. Now, let's summarize some things to improve on. Number one, it absolutely needs to grind finer. Like I said earlier, they're working on a new burst set, which I'm eagerly looking forward to, but it's not here yet. They made a couple different promises on the timing. Now I know with the pandemic and supply chains that things get delayed, but they're promising as of this video, a fall 2021 release date. So fingers crossed that this happens. Number two, it needs to be cleaner. While you can use the RDT method to help with that, I wish just out of the box, it was a cleaner experience. I mean, it's not the messiest electric grinder that you will ever use, but it's most definitely not the cleanest. Clean up shaft and grinds is a pain and it sticks to the grinder and it's hard to get it absolutely clean. Number three, it absolutely needs a new grind catch bin. Apart from it magnetically catching in place, the whole thing from the lid to the fins just needs redesigned. Number four, a more powerful knocker or one that just works because it just does not do its job. Number five, Adding a weighing cup to the setup would be nice. I could foresee some magnetic attachment to the side for easy and clean storage. Maybe that's just me. I haven't really seen people talk about that, but I would really like it. Well, there you have it. My one year review and thoughts on the fellow Ode grinder. Would I do it all over again? Absolutely. I love using this grinder, even though it doesn't get as fine as I want it to. But would I recommend you buying this grinder as of today on September 17th, 2021? Probably not. I would personally wait until version two of the burrs come out. While well, Kickstarter backers will get a free upgrade on the burrs, I doubt they will do that for those that buy it outright now. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Do you own the fellow Ode? 
What are your experiences with it? If you don't have it, are you thinking about buying the grinder? What is attractive to you? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. And don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it.